It's nice to know the man involved in the goal is as confused as all of us about this whole thing. Let's, uh, let's bring Graham Pohl into the conversation. Look, Graham, before we get into the actual decision and whether the decision was right or not, let's just talk about where this leaves VAR, because this is a Manchester United game mm -hmm. in the FA Cup. There would have been worldwide interest. The whole world would have seen those wibbly-wobbly lines on the telly. And we all know that perception is key in this sort of thing, isn't it? Yes, it is. I mean, I mean let's, let's be honest. We think, we think they got the right decision and that's, that's the most important thing and that's what the, the, the boys at Stockley Park, the VAR people, will, will stick to. Um, we, we need to clarify as well, clear and obvious is when we're looking at a handball, a foul or whatever. Offside is now defined very clearly is right or wrong. Someone's either offside or they're not. There's not a clear and obvious error situation with regard to offsides. So, so that clears that up. If it's proved that one Mata's knee was half a or one hundredth of a millimetre offside, then he's offside. There's no benefit to the attacker. Now, what's hard for us is to know exactly exactly what they're basing their decisions on at Stockley Park, where they yes. make these decisions. All that we all that we see is what they allow us to see, and this is what we saw. So let's just show you the way this whole thing worked out, and you can talk us through it if you can, Graham. And this is the first thing that is so confusing to people: mm -hmm. is why on earth there are wobbly lines on the screen. I mean, that's just that's just no use to anyone, is it? That was the key problem here. It, it was, and we're, we were seeing these lines being fed to us from quarter to five. Um, you know, 45 minutes before kickoff, so we're, we're seeing a, a technical issue. Now, it, we, we, we are told that that's the pictures that they're using, and then afterwards we're told maybe it isn't. So, so it's, it's quite confusing to know, you know, we can only go on what they're sending us. Mm. And what they're sending us has made it very, very unclear. Uh, and, and, and very confusing. It's, it's so close, it's such a tight decision. We need clarity um, mm. if we're gonna do this, because as I say, let me tell you something, a referee hates going away from a game when we're talking about a refereeing decision. You don't like it, you wanna be talking about a great goal, a great save. And all we're talking about from this match, which was a good game of football, we're talking about VAR. Graham, you know, this should be relatively simple as well, shouldn't it? Because this is a fact, as you've rightly said, it's onside or offside. We haven't even come to a subjective one yet. This is why for offsides and for, you know, for mistaken identity, for mm -hmm. red cards, I'm all in favour. But we're not even talking about subjective ones yet for the penalties because that's, again, whoever's in control of the VAR could get that wrong. And there's so much debate. We're having debate here over a factual decision, onside or offside. But... That kneecap is offside, so you would say it's come to the right decision, but how long does it, how long did it take? It's not even subjective. Well, that, and, that, and that's the problem because you can't, I mean, one matter said it himself, he celebrated a goal. It's a wonderful thing to do. I mean, I, I've never been that fortunate position to score a goal in front of a crowd like that. I've disallowed some wrongly, which doesn't help, but uh, I've never scored one. And, and to then have that taken away from you after a minute or however long the review was, I know it took us eight minutes to get it right. Um, so very, very difficult. And, and, and as we say, unsatisfactory. Mm. But the frustrating thing, and if we take a look at the decision with the straight lines, mm -hmm. you can very easily say that actually looking at it, once we get through this, is that one matters knee looks like it could be that millimetre offside and that's not going to be the conversation in tomorrow's papers. It's, that's not, is it, Paul? That's not what we'll be talking about. No, that's what we're talking about. The, the trouble is, I think they've got to the right decision. It's just the amount of time and the confusion to get to that decision. Well, it took us eight minutes to be sent this. And this was what we were sent. And even then, we're not really sure whether that's actually the, the correct frame. So we created our own. You can probably argue that maybe there is a kneecap offside there. So that's what we were sent uh, by the officials. And this is our own version. And again, if you squint and get close to the telly, you can probably make a case for a kneecap being offside. But again, it's taking a long time to get there. And we're now in this position where we had the issues with Willian at Chelsea. We had the amount of time it took to get to the right decision at Liverpool. We've had today. But then by the same token, we did the Leicester game where they made the right decision with Ian Acho and it worked. So it's very hard to defend and to say that we're ready for this for every game from next season. Someone's going to have to make a decision, Graham, very quickly about where we go for next season, aren't they? They are indeed, and, and of course we've got a World Cup in between, between then and now, when it is going to be used. Um, and I, I can't see anything but mistakes and delays, and, and what, what we're looking for is an enjoyable game of football. Mm. And the one thing we, we, we were worried about with technology was it spoils the flow of a game. And from what we're seeing, that's the case. All right, Graham, thanks for clearing that up for us, really appreciate it. Where does it leave you feeling about VAR, Paul? Um, I, I can't understand why they haven't spoken to the rugby league lads. 
what they do there, I think it's perfect. The, the fans are involved with it as well, they can actually see exactly what's yeah. happening. And we're not, we're, with now we're just so much confusion, we don't know when he's going to look at VAR. Okay, he did his, his symbol today, yeah. which we, we obviously knew, but then there's no, there's no, particip no participation from the fans, we yeah. just no idea what's going on. And I think with the rugby league, it's. I, I did a conversation with the rugby, people who run the rugby league. I, I don't know, but it's, it's definitely worth doing because they've got it off to a tee. The crucial thing to remember is this is a test. This is about learning. But that could have cost Manchester United a place in the FA Cup quarter final. It didn't, but it could have done. They've got to be very careful, haven't they? Yeah, it could have done. But you know, by the letter of the law, it's correct. So whatever happens, they've come to the correct decision. Jake, I, before today, I was, I was a, a fan of it. I was a fan because I would think offside or not. There's so much confusion once again. And we haven't even gotten to subjective issues about penalties and stuff, which, again, whoever's in charge of the VAR will make that decision. So for me, I'm not a fan. That's what we all want. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem, isn't it? VAR, that's always right yeah. and is always true. Um, and normally the issue with VAR are those incidents, we are going to talk about, <laughs> normally those incidents um, which are subjective. The issue today is to have all this furore about an offside which shouldn't be subjective, should it? No, no, we should have just been able to get to the answer straight away, shouldn't we? Yeah. Um, the fact that the lines were like this was, was just comical, wasn't it? And I had to talk about it thinking that it's going to happen. Yeah. And the fact that there was so much... Um, waiting around and of course as soon as the lines goes out everybody's just, you can imagine what the people are like watching it on the telly it just it just became an absolute shambles wasn't it and to, yeah. you know to just talk to over it was really know, confusing we only get those pictures yeah, of course, we, yeah. we, we choose what yeah, we give it took yeah, one one minute 40 seconds to make the decision on the field it took a further eight minutes eight plus minutes, yeah. for us to be sent from the VAR team a decision with a with a straight line that is that is the problem, and, yeah. and Jose is quite right. Yes. Um, let's talk then about the football. It's one of those strange days where Romelu Lukaku bags a couple of goals. He's gone over 20 for the season, and few people are talking about it. What did you think of his personal performance today? Yeah, I thought it was he was very good, and he's probably the difference between the two teams. Really, he didn't have a lot of the game. I don't think he wasn't involved a lot because Huddersfield were very good in possession. They were, they were excellent, but his two chances he had, he was deadly. Just very clinical scores. He wasn't he? Yeah. Very, very clinical. I think that's all you can say. I thought Huddersfield were excellent, but this is a really good part of his game. Holds up play, spin, turn, and then this is just about strength, isn't it? And the goalkeeper? Well, or is that, or is that just Romelu being know. clever? Yeah, I think so. I'd like Praise to think it was. Yeah. yeah, it's a good play Obviously for him. He wants to pitch up like that. He can go left and he can go right. We need to see more of that from him. because yeah. the, the power and the speed of him, he needs to run in behind a lot more. And today, he was, he was very good. The last few weeks, you we haven't really seen it. Maybe he lost a little bit of confidence, but here again, he, I think he starts out in his own half and look at him, he's off. Mm. And, and just defenders, especially defenders of this level, they, they can't live with that. Yeah. But then he's got to find the, the clinical bit. Mm. And he's That's what as well. you want to see from Manchester United as well, isn't it? Yeah, they had to play that way today. They had, they had to play on the counter-attack because Huddersfield was so good in possession. As good as I've seen mm. an Huddersfield yeah. team, to be honest with you. And the, the only scraps were playing on the counter-attack. And you had to say, every time United went forward, they did look very dangerous. Well, let's talk then about Manchester United's approach overall. For the first sort of 40 minutes, it, it was confusing to kind of see the plan from Jose Mourinho. And you two had a, a really no. good chat in here about what he was trying to do. They've won the game first and foremost. And, mm. you know, as, as Lukaku's two goals was brilliant. But they did that 4-3-3 shape. So they had really three holes in midfield as McTominay, Carrick was in the centre and Matic on the left and they had Sanchez on the left up front, Lukaku and Mata. So the problem was down, and I'm sure you th I thought Maka said in commentary, was down this right hand side, had a ganache and um, the centre four pulling out wide. So what happened was that for me as a midfield player, the left of the three, I'd be the one looking to get across. The argument to say, has Sanchez got to track the full back? That is the big question. Has, has Sanchez been brought to track runners in the, in the left back position for most of the first half? I'm not so sure he has. I think as a midfield player there, Matic, the question would be, has Matic got the legs to keep getting out there? So if you're the left side of a three in there, I think you've got to help out there and let Sanchez be the free spin up there. But he's worked hard for the team, Sanchez. He kept coming back. So he's probably out of his position would have been in a left <laughs> midfield position, Sanchez. Well, when did he come back, Sam? I don't, I don't, remember, I don't yeah. remember seeing him come back. He come back a few times, scores he? But uh, as, okay, as a midfielder there. I would think do that. You, you you just I just think he turns it. When you're under the cost like they were today and Huddersfield where had more possession early on. You just be, as far as I'm concerned, you just become a five across midfield. Sanchez is back alongside the three, and Matt yeah, is back, and that and Lukaku's there. And I'm, I, I thought they pinpointed that, and you could see he didn't fancy Chakamba. Yeah. 
United got the but results and they're in the draw. They were three uh, for uh, two. To be fair. They were three for two. So it was it was yeah. three for two. My, my, uh, we're outnumbering Huddersfield, right? So they had um, Ince as a as a free spirit. So if you're the left midfielder and you've got three for two, surely you've got to get across. Well, that's up to the manager. Yeah. We don't know what the manager said, do we? Yeah, we no. don't have said so Sanchez just leave him. You just stay. You just half mm. cheat. And Matic, you you be the one to get across, but. I don't think Matic was the right person for that job. He, no. could, he hasn't really got the legs anymore to do that. If you saw in the second half, he was almost playing as a left back. Yeah. He almost played with two left backs because he recognised the problem. And Sanchez almost played and as I a centre forward. I don't think he should do that all the time. I just think when you're under pressure for five, for ten minutes, because they had the ball all the time, and we're coming down this flank all the time, you just say, right, we're going to go to a five, stop them playing, and then once you get a little bit of a foothold, then you become let a three me, again. Yeah, then me, we go yeah. three and three. Let me, let me put this to you then. So if this was Man City, so I've seen Rashford playing for Manchester United. He's in the left back or right back position more than he's forward. It's Martial. They, I think in this side under Mourinho, they're that bothered about going backwards, whereas Man City, those players are forward. So you've got Fernandinho, you've got players in there, but Kevin De Bruyne. Because they're in possession all the time, so well, today United couldn't get in Manchester position. Manchester United against Yeah, Huddersfield. but today they couldn't get in position. Yeah, we have to say we have to give Huddersfield credit because mm. they didn't allow United, who played probably three older midfield players in a space of a little 10 yard area, McTominay, Carrick and, and Matic, they just couldn't get on the ball, they just couldn't control yeah, I wouldn't play. necessarily have a go at United today. No, no, I know, no, no, because you, have, go, you, you, have, to, you have to give the respect to the other team, who, you know, they had a really good game today, didn't they, Huddersfield? If, they played if you're, really well. Yeah, I'm just going to say, if you're in control of the play, if your midfield players are in control of the play, Sanchez can go to the left yeah, wing. Do whatever Matic he wants, yeah. Would it bother you right, playing in a team with Sanchez playing like that? Would it bother me? Yeah. Uh, again, it depends what the manager depends. wants. Yeah. And it depends how much possession you've got of the ball. If you've got the ball more times than and they did when he played, you can play with wingers and nice and wide and open the pitch up. Yeah. But once you're uh, under pressure from the other team, there's times when you have to go, right, everybody get in yeah. and let's just see this 10-15 this minute period out and then we'll beat them. When they get tired, then we'll take over. And they did, United. They weren't at the best, but they were just really clinical this I'll tell you one, if I was the left-hand side midfield like Matic, I wouldn't like it. No, no. No, you'd be, you'd be on to Sanchez all the time to get back with and them. Luke Shaw. And Luke Shaw, Luke especially. But they're, Luke not, they're not very vocal, they're very quiet players, yeah. aren't they? They're the ones that need to get back, because all the problems that were caused with the right-hand side, OK, they've won the game 2-0 yeah. and it was quite comfortable in the end, but the problems the first 20 minutes with the right-hand side with nobody going back with them. But the fact that they raided so many times, that's why, that's why Chris Smalling yeah. was so important today. And, well, he had a great yeah, game. Yeah, well. and in all of this, we're talking about Huddersfield playing so well. Let's yeah, very briefly just yeah. show you Huddersfield's yeah. forthcoming fixtures, because actually, Robbie, the next few games will determine their future in the Premier League. Look at that. West Brom, Swansea, Palace, Newcastle. That's it for them. Yeah, those yeah. are the games. The, the Spurs game, they'll, this is, I don't think they'll get anything there, but the West West Brom, Swansea, Palace, Newcastle, if they can win those games or get okay. points out yeah. of those, great chance of staying up. Right. Yeah. All right, thanks, gentlemen. I enjoyed that chat. That was really interesting. Um